rock cycle, but this rock uh, wasn't actually made by erosion or any of the normal uh, forces that would make a rock you know, smooth like this. These were actually smoothed by the poop and pee of thousands of sea lions. And as they poop and pee on this stuff, it you know, erodes away and washes away and makes it almost as smooth as a, a countertop. Uh, this rock is called Galapagos Marble uh, because you can't really find it anywhere else um, because there's no other place in the world where there's so many sea lions that are just chilling here. And we're on an island right now, Plaza Sur, where there's a colony of bulls, a colony of males that couldn't get a mate. And so they just all live here together, uh, tons and tons of them, all these rejected males. And so all they can really do is sit around and eat and poop all day long. And you get rocks like the ones you see right below me. And uh, yes, I have touched it, so I'll be definitely washing my hands after this video. So this rock behind me was cut out by a river a long time ago, but you can see on the rock this like greenish white stuff. This is probably a lichen or a fungus. It's something that's growing on the rock um, and seems to be moist enough and humid enough here now that I can get enough nutrients to actually like grow and survive. So over time you end up seeing trees like that growing on the rock as well because this sort of stuff will make soil by breaking apart the rock and adding some of its own like dead corpse matter, it's like organic matter, into the soil uh, and making it healthy enough for other things to grow. So after the lichens die on these rocks, you can see some green moss forming. Usually the sequence that these uh, move in is lichens, then mosses, then small plants like the ones you see, things like clover, uh, and then eventually shrubs, then eventually trees. So a place like this can start off as just a bare rock and eventually turn into a forest. These little rock formations behind me, these holes in the rock are called honeycomb erosion. And apparently it happens when there's parts of the rock, the sandstone especially, where the rock has really been cemented together as tightly as in other areas. Cement doesn't always hold the sedimentary rock together the same amount in every place. And just like in some places you might have potholes or cracks in concrete or in pavement, same thing happens here. So the water that's seeping in from above will erode away little bits of the sand that are loosely held together and they'll slide out on the other side, leaving behind these little holes that almost look like a beehive. As water runs off down slopes, uh, whether it's through rainstorms or just rivers, uh, eventually they carry sediments away, eroding them off of the surface. And we've looked at this on the sides of rocks, so this happens on soil too. And when you erode away enough of it, and if a tree is really old or if there's a storm with some wind, various forces going about on this tree, uh, eventually they can erode away so much soil that this tree's roots lose grip and they fall down in the forest. Um, a lot of times in areas like this, this is actually good for the forest because this tree will decompose over time. It's got a lot of nutrients and minerals and things in it. And uh, you can see there's already some stuff growing on it, mosses and funguses and decomposers and things. Uh, as it breaks down into the soil, it makes for really healthy new soil that young new trees can grow up in. And so the cycle of this forest keeps uh, moving like this with water and wind helping uh, move it a little bit faster. Problem is, if you have too much of this stuff happening, um, either like construction waste and runoff coming off, or you cut down too many trees and there's not enough holding them together, then the trees don't have time to help rebuild the soil for the forest to grow back. 